aware of that, how can you come up with a proper evaluation to serve the true purpose of being so you know the data, you know the scope of work, you know what needs to be done, you actually perform an analysis, right? Supply and demand, the same thing everywhere you go. You know, a lack of supply increases demand, which increases price. A lack of demand decreases supply and decreases price, right? So we also have to go over what we call highest and best use, which is finding what is exactly the best physically, financially, and legally easy way of using this property, right? And then if there are improvements that need to be done, how much does that cost? And if it is vacant, is that the best use of the property in itself? All of these things are done and completely necessary for a job of appraiser. And this is for any and every property that they actually utilize, that they actually are paid to come out and inspect. And then if, let's say someone just demolishes the actual unit building house on top of the land where you were in it's single-handedly. All of these things come into play and are a factor. Right? So we have to be aware of each and everything that could be a, that could affect the property in itself. Right? Sales, cost, and income. And then we look at all all of that in each formula, come up with a number that is balanced using all, all the numbers. Appraisal reports can be long pages, they could be 10 pages. It really is an important function, and it is something that is necessary for the business itself, right. In the business itself is this transaction. Purchase, buying, selling. This is it's probably this is the reason why there's so much emphasis on this is because this is the actual determinant of value. Right? And sometimes in certain transactions, if they get that value wrong, it stays for months or years or anything like that. Determinant on the conditions of the actual area. I could do an appraisal and that appraisal value is really low. And you can't get another appraisal for six months. So anytime somebody else tries to buy the property, they're going off of the appraisal that was done right then and there in that time frame. You know, the market could change completely all of these factors. So we have to be aware of that. Right. So now we have the three steps of estimating the value, which was just mentioned. In a sales comparison approach, what is the value by just analyzing the sales in the local area? Within a mile, within two miles, within 10, within a half, right? In a market that is very competitive. Now, substitutes, right? A product that may look the same may technically be the same, but it's not the same, would sell for similar price. But the problem is how do we determine if a substitute actually exists and how many have sold? The hardest part in a competitive market outside of finding a property is finding a substitute to compare to the property that you're looking for. Is it helping us? Is there something different, right? If there's something different, is it worth more or less than what we're looking at, right? All of these questions are things that we are looking to address. We are looking to find, we're looking to determine, 
All of these things are important to all of us. But we don't technically have the availability, right, as an investor to have all this information. We have to pay for the research or do the research ourselves or pay other services to get this done. So the question is, if you're having trouble finding people to do the research for you, how could you do how could you do the research on your own to do that if you're having trouble finding people to even do the research itself? So the availability of people to do it along with the actual research is a difficult task in itself, right? That's why people purchasing stuff is not for the faint of heart. Investing is not for the faint of heart. There's a lot of research involved. There's a lot of time. There's a lot of money involved. And you have to be prepared for all of that. So it's really up to that person themselves to understand that. Right? So we have to determine determine what factors are most important to us. And then we take it from there, right? Now, as an investor, let's say you have the property that you're looking at. And then you think that 100 other people looking at that property are substitutes acceptable for you. Now, that is an individual determinant. Because it's up to you as the investor. It doesn't make sense. Does a substitute make sense compared to the real thing? That's up to you to actually decide. That's not up to you an outside person. It's the actual end value investor at the end. Right? So we have all the data, opportunities, public records. You know, multiple listing service, all of the things. Did you have a question? Um, yes, uh, sir. Um, so I want. I just wanted to tell you that uh, we're having problems uh, hearing you. I think it's a connection problem. Um, so yeah, uh, everyone has a uh, the same opinion. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, yes. Yes, yes, me too. Okay. Yes, sir, me too. Uh, we believe it's a, a connection problem. Uh, your voice is entrapped, entrapped uh, by time by time. Got it. And uh, sorry, sir, do we have any study guide for the um, course? Um, study guide. Not sure. really on the PowerPoint um, every week, um, but this is not necessarily a study guide. Um, all the information that you would need to be present in the PowerPoints in itself. Okay, and uh, do we have any test or assignment during the class? Um, test not yet. Um, but there will be a test pretty soon. I will give you guys at least two weeks notice to that when that is present, and that'll be uploaded in Moodle as well as a reminder through your Windsor email, so that you are aware of that um, in due time. Um. We just for these first few weeks, like there hasn't, been, I would say, not everyone's been able to attend all class sessions. Um, there's been a consistent of you that have been to the majority of all of them. So we're just trying to balance that out just because we need to, you know, increase engagement and make sure that people are actually paying attention, right? 
So once there's an understanding for that, there's going to be tests that determine the knowledge and understanding of the material that's been presented so far. Um, which, like I said, will be coming up pretty soon, but you guys will have two to three weeks notice for that, so you can actually prepare for it. Yeah, that's right. Thank you. You're welcome. So, just like I said, keeping uh, that in mind. Right, so keeping that in mind, um, just when it comes to showing up, right? You know, making sure that you're paying attention. I know that a lot of you don't have cameras on, which is okay, but still paying attention, taking notes and being attentive, right? Just, you know, checking on things. Those are steps to show that you're actually paying attention. I know, you know, a lot of our classes don't necessarily have participation involved in the actual class because we want to make sure that we get a lot of this information out because it is a lot of information just for anyone who doesn't really you know have knowledge of the courses that we are teaching but you know what i'm saying if you know classmates that are in your class you know reach out to them let them know that they should be here because when the test does come they're not present they're putting their own selves at a disadvantage compared to those that are here. So these are things just to keep in mind, right? You know, it's the same as when you're looking for properties. You can't just want to purchase a property but have no access to the information. You would keep yourself and putting yourself at a complete disadvantage, which does not allow you the opportunity to, to achieve your actual goals. Just keeping those things in mind for your goals, right? Your goals are to learn and come to school. And as an investor, your goals are to purchase as many properties with the money that you have available. Right. So you're trying to make, trying to use more. So if you're not utilizing those services and aspects, you are only side of it. The information is there. Right. Right there. You just have to find it in the easiest way possible. So that you can do your research. And research is time consuming, costs money, all of these different things that we have to be aware of. We have to have the opportunity to do. Right. So there are, um, you know, small things like adjustments that can happen to sales properties, condition, right, demand, supply, availability, right. All of these different things are affecting the value of sales in the area. Just. <laughs> This one individual you know, uh, unit that you may be looking at at that time is our right. All of these things are very fluid. They change a lot. They have, you know, city, you know, city restrictions. They have height restrictions. They have have update restrictions. All of these different factors that are coming about happen all the time, and they're completely unpredictable. So it is really up to us to do our research when we're wanting to purchase. And if we're not doing our research, we're just failing ourselves and our goals won't get accomplished, which is exactly what we don't want, right? So again, with some other adjustments that need to be made, the actual terms of the deal, how you're paying for the deal, the condition of the sale, things that may be available if it's a large property, furniture, 
carports to cover the car in case of bad weather, how the market's going to change between the original sale date, which is the day you agreed to purchase the property, and then the date you actually take ownership, which is the date that the sale Includes so all of these little things are important, but you also have to find a way to do as much information research as possible. So you can look at repeat sales that you know sales that adjust the market conditions, and you know in that determine or try to predict if values are going to go up or down based on factors that we don't really pay attention to. So naturally store changes in price is the help us determine all of these types of things. business of you know the first important thing is location right and economic characteristics along with how the property looks if it's being used the right way right that's what we call the highest and best use again and then if there's anything left I find right remember personal property are things that can be moved it doesn't matter how much effort it takes to move the property can it physically be removed if there's an option for it to be physically removed, it is personal property because I can move it. It may take three or four people, but it can be moved. That's what's most important. And so these, this is an example of an adjustment of a sales price based upon the conditions of the market. Things those would be important that may become important, like size, a swimming pool, a view, and an obvious one, the quality of the structure, right? You don't want to have an earthquake and this thing collapses. These things are very important. So after the property is being has been appraised and the value comes, if there are some interesting it actually gets adjusted automatically is the transaction because if a home comes back appraised lower, naturally the negotiation process begins to get close to that value if they're choosing to do that. So in the transaction, a lot of things that the buyer would pay for is a percentage of the actual closing price. So that is easily adjustable. Then you have the property adjustments when it comes to value later. And you just have to be cautious about notifying, you know, converting the percentage adjustment into actual dollar amounts, right? So that's an example of adjustment. So in our adjustments, we see the dollar amounts that actually change based upon things that we find out in the appraisal. So, so all of these things are important for the transaction. You see that are immediately done, right? And then the market. Values come late. So, except for all things that aren't necessarily real estate related, right? Personal property or things like that are already in. And then the raise the amounts are later. So, these are things we have to keep. And if you are, you know, familiar with accounting, these, you know, this is kind of the, you know, similar to a profit loss statement on the sale of a property. 
right? All of these changes we have to be aware of, we have to keep in mind, we have to acknowledge, and we have to be prepared for. And if we're not prepared for that, we can be confused, we could be, right, in a position where we have no idea what is actually occurring and we're just throwing money and potentially we are losing money. So having all this information available to us is perfect, but we also have to do what takes the most time, which is understanding the information and then utilizing it for what we need, right? We need to be able to utilize the information so that we can make sure we're using the property that we're purchasing for its highest and best intended use, right? We have to understand why we're using it, how we're using it, and if it's the right way that we're using it, right? You don't want to purchase something and not be able to use it, right? You buy a swimming pool, but you're using it as a shower. You're not getting your money's worth. It's not a bathtub either. It's a swimming pool. Right now, understanding that that you're losing money if it's not in its best use and it's in hideous, right? Then you are losing money. All right, so here's an example of a sales comparison. We're looking at a property located next to a freeway, right? We're improving on this property with a unit or a dwelling that is eight room, two baths, two baths. When we were looking at the property and inspecting it, it was in great condition. So we automatically look at the comparables in the area, or as we call it, a comp. And we have to decide which of these are the most direct related or equal looking at the property. So all of the first three aren't close to a freeway. The last one is, but the third one is very similar to the property itself because it's 2,000 square feet. The improvements are very similar. It's just not adjacent to a freeway. But if you look at this last one, it was bigger, right? Most of the freeway it sold for less than what we're looking for. Well, I'm just close to it. It's more like closer to between 140 and 150. Right, so these things are important. Comparables are important because that helps determine the market value. Now, personally, if we're looking at a home that's one hundred forty hundred thousand dollars, in my personal experience, it's very rare where I live. It doesn't happen. Maybe twenty years ago, not today. Definitely not today. So knowing that. Right, knowing the products and what's available to us, we know what to spend so we don't overspend. Right, we don't want to spend. We rather completely underspend and use that money for potential improvements. Right, aspects of our home that we would actually want if we're going to actually live in this property. So knowing what exactly is available to us. And what we would want is the important thing for us. Here's some more examples. Chestnuts. Right. Now, one of the things I like about this book so far that we've been utilizing in, you know, preparing PowerPoints from is it mentions a lot that a lot of real life situations the values that we see never line up identically and what do i mean by that 
the prices that you agree to pay for and the appraised price in small, small occasions actually match up as close to possible. It is hard. Sometimes, you know, like I said, you undervalue, which is it praises for way more than what you paid for. And then on the flip side, you have the other option as well, where you paid way more than it's worth. Right? It's basically like gambling. You don't know if you're going to win or lose. It's more about the thrill or the potential to actually win and lose. So these are things to think about as well. And then the cost approach is a in the actual determinant price. So we have the estimated reproduction cost, which is the cost to produce materials that are needed to improve the property, minus depreciation, which is natural depletion or obsolescence, as we call it, of a property itself. And then the value of the site, right? which is the land. And that comes out with the value as well. Sometimes those values are the same. Sometimes those values are different. You just need them both. You need to be aware of them both and you need to understand them both. Right. Then remember again, you know, call um, to create something that is different of the same equal utility, the same functionality. Then you have the reproduction cost, which is the cost of an exact replica. So it looks the same. It is the same. It's just not the actual property. So it's like having a home, right? On the outside, it looks just like the home you purchased, but the inside's different because you've added your touch on the inside because you're living in it. But the home on the outside next door is exactly the same. So I've reproduced it and it allows us to have the same home exactly the same just slight different approach right so what are our methods to actually estimate the replacement costs right we have a survey which is most accurate and it looks at the amount and quality of all materials and labor cost of installation per square foot and cost of every building aspect. Gas and water hookups, windows, a roof, a door, a garage, driveway, right? Each and everything that is involved in a property, right? How much does it cost to replace all of that again? Here's the thing. In instances like we're dealing with, let's say the home you lived in was built 10 years ago. Our economic environment is completely different today than 10 years ago. The cost of materials is higher. The cost of labor is higher. Inflation is higher. So in instances of today, is it going to cost us more to replace or less, right? Since everything is risen, it costs us more to replace. So it's not necessarily an exact replica from 
construction. It's an exact replica from sale and inspection. Right? These are things to be aware of. Right? Depreciation is not tax depreciation. It is the difference between replacement cost and market value. Now, things that you have to consider anytime you purchase physical deterioration. Variation, right? If you're not keeping up with the maintenance of a property, how does that affect the property? Function obsolescence, the intended function of the property is unavailable. Right? In the condition of the property is in at the moment, I can't use it in the way that I intended to use the property when I first purchased it. And is the community that my property is in are they thriving are they gaining money are they losing money when it comes to all those things affect evaluation of a property right a lot of times we're not aware of that and we have to be aware approach the property. So, right. so it's going to happen. You can't stop it from happening. Just have a, a every day is all. And a lot faster. Right now, function obsolescence is due to changes in the people that you can never control, which is the outside. I can never control what people on the outside actually want and need. Can't understand, you know, what their preferences are because they're consistently changing. Right, customers are always changing what they want and need because. Everything has changed. Community, technology, all of these things change. So how could you keep up with that? If your customers can't even keep up with that, they don't know what they want sometimes. Sometimes they just use things because of ease. Sometimes they use it because it's necessary. Right, there's a lot of things that are actually necessary in our everyday lives, but that's all subjective. Obsolescence. Functional obsolescence, which is, like I said, the ability of doing things that we intended to do. But it's an expected change in the market based on things that we control. You can never control what more doing and wanting you only can control the property itself right so it's about things beyond the boundaries more true. not enough homeowners compared to renters issues in the environment things we don't really discuss and want from people, right? People can change their mind. You change your mind as a customer. And something about something that you were wanting so bad, and then you looked at it the next day, you're like, eh, I don't need it anymore. Right? My desirability or demand is a key one. Neighborhoods are always consistent. And we can truly control. Right? That's government control. Or who knows that happen. I 
from 10 years now anyway you go paint this idea so as we're looking at our appraisal assignments right the things like insurance appraisal new building specialty because in specialty you can only sell to certain people because they only want to know how to use the highest and best users i can't sell my medical office to a realtor right but i can sell that on medical they're the ones who are going to be looking at the highest and best use because they need everything that's in there these are some examples of appraisal slides right but we have to be aware of every potential change right these are things that we need to know um, right so in comparables these are models that are based upon millions of sales it's combining regression and potential with repeat sales and other techniques, right? And all of these things are important. So you're gonna sell a home, a lot of people use Zillow, which isn't really efficient. Never heard of small sale, right? So when we are purchasing property, no matter what we do, we have to do all of our research. You to notice exactly what's going on in our market. You can't just go in and buy something. Because even if you're spending a bunch of money on a property, when you sell it, you potentially have an opportunity to not get any of that money back or even make a dime, or if you're lucky to break even. But that high price you pay has now affected everyone else in the area. And affecting everyone else in the area We don't know if that actually is the best way to go about purchasing a product. Affecting everyone else in the area so that people have become priced out. That's not ethical. It doesn't make any sense. Right? But it happens everywhere we go. So now, as we start into chapter eight, right? We are trying to understand from all perspectives, right? We looked at the cost perspective. Now we're looking at the income perspective, which is the money we're bringing in from the property every month, right? So our goal, again, is to bring money in the future that we're going to make from this property into now. So that's what we are trying to do here. So our, our value is a present value, which is value that is live right now of entity income. Right. Our goal is to do this for properties that have already and currently do this. And most people, when they're looking at income valuation, is we're looking at what is our rate of return by using the exact way the property was made to be used right so even if they have to take time from school to come with their parents to look at the property their goal is when the parents pass on they can actually take a hold of the property and gain more money from a sale of it because more often than not, they don't want to deal with the property. Most family members don't want to deal with the property of an investor. Too much work, don't have the knowledge, too much time. Right. So the direct capitalization is your finding of value 
based upon so how much money is coming back to you if you invested this amount of money or this amount of money that's what this income value is doing for you to make your investment back and then to double your money or increase it Or we just can the the both from a current basis to make this money back. All of these things are important. All of these things matter. It's just how are we going to do it in the way that is beneficial for us as an in investor, right? This, this is all about our feet and what's important because of what we do, right? No matter what anybody else says, we're on the property at the end of the day. We're the ones that have to keep the maintenance up, in the taxes, deal with the depreciation. It is the investor's responsibility to either have those things available or to hire someone to make those things available. That is all. Like that is all that matters for some right? All of these things matter to us. We have to notice and be prepared, right? We have to understand what the typical rate of return is so that we know when that money's coming back. Right. So every situation gives us an opportunity to understand what's the best approach, right? For discounting the money that we're receiving now to estimate a future return, we have to understand the values that we don't really need to know about. Right, because understanding what their rate of return was from the previous investor. Because that was when they first purchased the property. It's not an active plan. If it was an active plan, that would be different. But this is not an active plan. This is just the information that they had from this point, because this is what they were doing. So there are different the value of property, clearly. It's just which one is the most effective way for you or or for your organization. All right. So that's net in, net operating income. These are the types of commercial leases, right? So when we do residential leases, these are homes and apartments and condos and townhomes. Commercial leases are any type of building that increases a rate at a set schedule or you know you're paying rent based on certain things like tenants you're paying a percentage of the tenant sales which goes into a fund which is just considered more right or it increases at a schedule that's determined upon and agreed. So it's the same thing. You're still purchasing, but you're purchasing just to utilize the property compared to purchasing to owning the property, right? And rental income is generated to generate by leases is based upon location, demand, amenities, and it's not really tied to any scale but it is very dependent on availability and comparability right For example of building so you have potential gross income which is the money that is brought to you in a specific span based upon the occupancy rate 
of the book, which is how many people, based upon a list here, how many people are paying a monthly income or if they're checking every year, how much have you paid a year compared to the price and what are my competitors spending or what are my landlords spending? That's how you get a fact percentage of gross income, right? Grandma times, then if you want an income, is that number there? Subtract it by expenses. That's your net income for the year or for a month, however, you're deciding to do this. That's just some payments. And that is so you can use current rents to estimate where I'm at. We're not building homes that much, but we're building condos and townhomes for rent. So it's easier for that investor to get their money back. So they'll offer a little bit more when it comes to safe amenities in a unit or in a project to get the deal done. So we have to be aware that we have to know that. And then you have what we call effective gross income. For those of you that will be involved in hotels, you can just daily, right? You know how many rooms there are? You can see the rate and you can see how many people have booked rooms. So you can multiply those numbers time. The rate, that's the money that's being bought in for every day. So all of them have to be aware of. We have to we have to notice. We have to all these things that affect ourselves and our investments have done, right. The knowledge has to be we can't do that. We have to, right again with the best informed decision possible. We have effective growth are being used, right? Office space, clubhouse rentals, or like spa or something. And garage fees and parking fees, right? So some places you can't park on the street. And then if there's nothing in the driveway, where are you going to park? So all of these things are important, right? And it's extra money into the business trying to make up for a lot of great season or nature. All right. So operations are natural expenses that are necessary to keep a proper function. Being competitive. We're trying to make sure that no matter what happens to the property, it can still be ran. So if it's not understood or not being fully utilized, What's the point of having it? Right. You have a parking lot that's half full. Why aren't you renting it? Now, the dope from UCLA game, if you're in my area or if you are, you know, utilizing a parking for his guest parking, right? Are, Charging guests to park in there overnight? Are you paying for four cars and he wants to park all four cars on the parking lot? Are they being paid for that? Are they being charged a fee? What is our potential for 
you know, income from operating the business consistently on a natural highest and best use opportunity. Right? These expenses are things that help you utilize and so let them know and let them know what their expectations are. Right? All of these things are important, right? Our expenses are necessary because that determines our profit. The more expenses we have, the more money we can have to make, the more money we're going to have to put forth, right? Fines, working fees, those are all sure and come up for the seller, but for the buyer, their expenses. This is exactly what they need to get their job done. Right, so understanding that not to any of these forms, right? None of those options, mortgage payments, tax depreciation, capital expenditures, commissions, none of that stuff matters in expenses. It matters in the income. So you have to determine the difference between what's in the operating expense and what is natural. So all these things, right? Our capital expenditures are non-recurring that increase the value. Right, we're trying to increase the value of our business, stretch and so life. So we're going to do things like replacing a roof, updating the AC and the heat, right? Fixing parking areas, adding additions to the property. We're going to do that. Um, okay. The diploma is another form of writing out all of your expenses and things like that. So we have to keep all of these things at the top of our mind once we purchase a property. Once we purchase the property, it gets a little bit easier. Some people don't like man managing things because a lot of stuff on their plate. Whatever it may be, right? all of these things are necessary and important to you as now there's also the potential to have industry data, right? See if it actually ends up there. But all of these things are important to us. Right. And then there's different places to get this from. Building managers, owners, market participants, right? Knowing where to get the information is the first step, right? If you're in specific areas like in California, parking is a premium. So charging extra for parking because it's something that people need will always increase the value because now you have a parking lot, right? You have a parking lot and you have a property. So you are using as close as possible the highest and best use and leaving yourself open for opportunities to make more money, which is what you would want. Right. So now, after you figure out the expenses, right, you get into what we like to call net operating income. So we have the of the operating income, right? The most fun. From your detriment, you know, the final, the fun, the fundamental determinant of a property's value. They are understanding, right, exactly what this is. The AOI is here to 
actually understand the debt that they, the owner is exposing itself to every day. Right? The potential for gross income minus money that of things made me in collection or if I have a property that's vacant units. I lost that money already. Miscellaneous income. And then we have our expenses. After we calculate that, our miscellaneous income into our income, and then we should check all of the other expenses. That you know why that number is how we're operating on a day-to-day basis, month by month, year by year. Losing money, make money. Right. That's what we're looking for. So this is the actual formula for determining, right, how fast it is for us to get our money back. How long would it relatively take? It's not a cap rate. It's not a discount. It is just an evaluation method. For those who are familiar with math and what a cap rate does. So to understand the direct capital, we need to look at our NOI over the selling price. This percentage tells us exactly what it takes to succeed. All right. Looking at the actual numbers. At about a point. So, if we know that it's going to increase by that, the more opportunities we put ourselves, you know, to add on to that, our, you know, sidewalks, things, things out, our, all of these different potential things, right, are outside looking better. Having all of these potential things allows us to gain income, right, while in the sh- short term temporarily losing it or investing it back to our business, investing yourselves when we do that right the next couple of years our right slowly goes up because we're still trying to make back the money that we spent to make more money and how do we actually find our nois and sales prices Right. Have just, which are just forms that actually acknowledge what the property and its condition is and what it was doing from before. Right. So this helps us with the market value. Over the next Year. All right, so it's only the first year for a direct capitalization that we mentioned, and the cash flows are going to be the future. Right, so we're trying to compare our now to our future 5, 10, 15, 20 years from now. This is what cap rate does. It helps us do that. All right. Any questions on anything so far? Now, one last thing that we'll go over is our gross income multiplier. One of the reasons why gross income multiplier is important is because we're trying to figure out, and let's say we're a domestic, right? We own skyscrapers and office buildings and all this other stuff. Our effective gross income multiplier allows us to see the potential money to be made on smaller projects.
gross income, right? We assume that the rents are paid and that there is about the same amount of operating expenses across comparable properties, right? All of those things are important. That also helps us determine what that value would be, right? So just dividing by a sales price, like a gross income, all of that divided by a future price. Any other questions? I feel like we're at a good place to stop for today. Next week, we will go more in depth on the problems that comes with capitalization, problems that come with these actual valuations. Because sometimes our information can be outdated and multiple risks. So we want to be aware of that and we want to be able to prepare for that. So Having knowledge of those things will only do us better for our future investments as well as our current investments. So I'd like to thank you guys again for coming this week, right? You know, this information is not for everyone to understand for time around. It's a very complicated a very complicated um, topic just because there's a lot of numbers, there's a lot of information that some people have access to and some not. So that, you know, when it comes to that aspect of things, it makes life a little bit harder. But having the information taken on to do it allows for success for us in the future. So keep that in mind. Again, you guys have a great week and I will see you next week.